speak to us today in a mighty way. Lord, I would pray that we would just block out the world, that we would not be thinking about where we're going after here, what's going to happen on Monday or Tuesday, that we would take the next 45, 50 minutes, that we would tune out everything, that we would keep our hearts and our mind and our soul focused upward so that when we walk out of this building today, we could say that we were in the presence of a mighty God, that our lives have been changed, let us never be the same. Father, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> While Daryl's preparing, <clears throat> we have a, a, a text comedian up here. Daryl uh, texted. He, he was going to do this song. The song happens to be, all he texted was, I love to tell the story. And Jeff down here texts back, well, why don't you just do it this Sunday and tell it then? So we're going to let him tell it. <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't not that funny now. No. <laughs> you had to do that. It wasn't that funny then. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, when he says, I, lo I'm going, I love to tell the story Sunday, I said, I want to tell it now. Oh. I believe that was. See, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's so much See, more fun. It's oh, funny sorry. when you say it that way. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. I always heard if you had to explain the joke. It lost something. It did. Yeah. Take off, Daryl. Tell us the story. Are you ready to get rescued here? <laughs> yeah, please. I'll just try to. Well, I don't know how successful I'll uh, be. All right. Good morning, everybody. I love to tell the story of unseen things of love, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings like nothing else will do. I love to tell the story It'll be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. It's pleasant to read. What seems each time I tell it more wonderful and sweet. I love to tell the story for someone I've never heard. A message of salvation from God's own holy word.
you know, we're charged to do that in the gospel, to tell the story. So um, let's, there's no better way to start the morning. Start each day by telling the story. And it gives me the opportunity, because I get the next song, to say this. Y'all know what time of the month it is? Pizza time. All right. Pizza time, Wednesday night. So Y'all come join us. Um, nothing good better than pizza, except maybe steak or something else. We're not doing steak night. Oh, come on. All right, y'all ready? Yeah. We open our doors before ten, and we'll always welcome you in. You can sit anywhere that you like, and we'll do our best to lead you to the light. We don't. Sabbath morning 
Kongen så svindelig er kongen Og kom til the church in the day Oh, kom, 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 kom Kom til the church in the wild world Kom til the church in the day starting to get excited because y'all thought I was <laughs> No way to better serve the Lord than get involved in um, the type of trails through the youth. Like JJ was saying, it's just a blessing to be a part of the family. Um, well, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week, it's a blessing to be a part of this family. And it's Amen. something for which I am thankful. Some of us don't have any money. There's bills that we can't pay. We all need to believe that there's a will, there's a way. You may think you're in a bad shape. Someone somewhere is worse. We need to be thankful. We're not thankful enough. We need to be thankful for everything we got. We need to be thankful. Even if we don't think it's a lot. Every day we wake up. We need to thank 
thank God for His love. We need to be thankful. We're not thankful enough. His love we take for granted. His name we seldom call. Unless we really need Him, we never think of Him at all. We need to take better care of this world He made for us. We need to be thankful. That's that's one for James. Yeah, one for James. About 42 for the rest of us. <laughs> that ain't a winning score. And I'm six don't cut my Chet Atkins there. <laughs> I would really, as bad as I hate to do this, I'd really like to skip this one and just finish with the next one. JJ, that may move you up just a hair, but I just, I don't feel like I'm ready to do this one right now. I very seldom am going to ever do that. I, I, bet, you, I bet he can feel Y'all are too. welcome. JJ gets some extra time. The rest of them may not forgive you for this, but hey, <laughs> JJ's ready. I don't know if anybody's ready well, or not. I lost a contact also, so I'm having trouble getting any reference from my music. This, this is bad. 
Y'all can stand up. We won't care. Better stretch before the long ending. God kept saying he had something for me. Yeah, he did. Something he called love, but I confess. Yeah, she did. I went looking where I shouldn't have been looking. Something you can be grateful for. Like, is ice cream a blessing? I think so. <laughs> Especially if it's got chocolate syrup. All right. Let me ask you another thing. Is passing a test a blessing? Huh? How about getting a whipping? You don't see it now, but it is. And it would be really hard for me to explain in three minutes. And I would get a big disagreement from all of you. But God blesses us in so many ways, and some that we recognize and some that we don't. But you know why one of the biggest reasons God's, what we should do with God's blessings, one of the biggest things we should do with God's blessings? What are you always told to do with your toys? Put them up. <laughs> Not the word I was looking for, but that'll work. Uh, how about share? You ever been told to share? And that's what God said. When we bless, when we're blessed by God, God asks us, to be a blessing and share that to others. That we take that bless. And you know what happens when we do that? The more you share your blessings, the more God blesses you. And then the more you get to share, and the more God blesses you. And then the more you get to share, the more God blesses you. Do you think friends are a blessing? 
absolutely. Good friends are a true. Do you think brothers are a blessing? <laughs> he does. She doesn't. <laughs> Funny how that works out, isn't it? But believe it or not, our friends are blessings and our family are blessings and they're all gifts from God. So some of you all are going to talk about friends and some of you all are going to talk about blessings. Friends? Who's got the blessings? That goes over there. You want to take that over with you? All right, y'all go on in your room. <laughs> there you go. Yep. She going over with the big girls. Oh, man. Let's have a prayer for him. He's going in the room. Four ladies and one man. We love you guys. We do. Us, Ben, we love you very, very much. Today we're going to continue in the book of Daniel. And a big question came up as I was studying and going through this. And, and it kind of hung out there for me for a while. And one uh, that I believe is brothers and sisters in Christ that we need to continually remind ourselves and ask ourselves. Because I'm a forgetful person. Anybody else? I believe in nature that we're forgetful. Uh, talking with the kids and I was going over their lesson of blessings. I think that's one of the things we forget. That we bypass. Uh, I think we become a... Uh, what have you done for me lately kind of people? You know, okay, God, you did this, you did that. I'm thankful for that, but what's next? You know, but as we forget, sometimes we don't see our options. We can get focused on the bad. We often look past what's right in front of us, the way out. We get down, we get lonely, we get afraid, we get confused. And I'm going to give you an example for me. I'm working on my tractor, which I don't really like to do. And I got this part I'm trying to take off. Anybody been there? Every day. And you beat on it. And you pull on it. And you pry on it. And you wrench on it. And it won't come off. And you get frustrated. Anybody else do that? Discouraged? Maybe a little bit angry. Huh? Really? Wrenches are flying around the shop. So finally you call a friend. Now this guy ain't no mechanic. He's just a friend, a good friend, you know. He's not a mechanic though. And you call him. And he gives you this question. See, he knew that you had the right tool. And he'll say to you, don't you have one of these? And you're like, oh yeah, I do have one of those. And you go to your toolbox and you open up the top drawer and right there in the back, there's where it lays. Now you're kind of excited, aren't you? You almost go back to the tractor with joy in your eyes and enthusiasm and excitement because you know you got the tool, you got the right tool. You just take it and, and, it, and it pops off. And you think to yourself, how did I forget this? It was right there all the time. How did I not remember? How did I not know that I had exactly what I needed? And you know, we do the same thing with God in our walk with God. We hit a rough patch and we struggle. We try everything we know to get through it. We try the advice of others. Usually, most of the time, it's from a co-worker or something, a non-believer. We get angry, we get frustrated, we get discouraged. We think there's no hope. And then someone says to you, kind of out of the blue, hey, you know, you got the right tool for that, right? A lot of times it's someone that don't even believe. So you go to your spiritual toolbox and guess what's there? God. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And it's been there all along, just waiting for you to come and get it. But sometimes I think as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we forget how great our God really is. Yeah, we sang a song, How Great Thou Art, don't we? Been sung in churches for years and years and years. But I think inside on our daily basis, in our spiritual walk, in our daily lives, that we forget how great God is. See, God is God. And He's awesome. But He's great. He is the creator of everything. 
He is the only one worthy of our praise, the Bible says. He is the only one that we should go to in hard times. He is the only one we should call on. But a lot of times when we hit the hard times, we feel that God is our God and He knows us and, and He knows the situation we're in. And if we're in this situation, it's because God's got a reason and God knows we're here and we just have to find a way out. Isn't that how we do it? And notice what I said there, that we have to find a way out. Never ever anywhere in the Bible that God has ever said you need to figure this out on your own. You know that? He has never left you in a spot where he says, okay, you got yourself there. Figure it out for yourself. I heard that from my dad a couple times when I was getting my one phone call. <laughs> you got yourself there, son. I hope you can figure a way out. Guess what? I could I needed the help of my mother. <laughs> Mommy. No. But we figure for some reason that God is God and He's too busy and He's got this going on and we forget how great God really is. What a great and awesome and mighty God that we serve. How many of y'all ever seen the movie Facing Giants? Facing the Giants with Kendrick Brothers. Football movie. You ever see it? There's a scene in there after they win the championship. He goes around the room and he asks the guys, is there anything impossible for God? Because they built this, beat this great team that had all these players and they only had a few players and they went out and they and accomplished the impossible because they recognized not just God, but they recognize the greatness of God. How great God is. And it's an amazing, an amazing thing when we start to get the content. I tell you this, you think unbelievers can't get you back on track and understand? Has anybody that you know, that you know does not have a relationship with God ever said this, would you pray for me? Hmm? Why would they ever say that? Because they have seen the greatness of the God that you believe. Now, they don't want to put their trust in Him. They don't want to believe it, But they know that He is able to handle their problem. Surely they didn't say it just for something to say. Surely they didn't say it because, hey, well, that's a Christian, so i got to say you know, something about prayer or something. So I'm just going to ask them to pray. They have seen in you, seen in others, the greatness, how God has delivered. And what they've seen in that, they said, you know what? Would you pray to that great God of yours that maybe, just maybe, He would help me out? From an unbeliever, it reminds us just how great God is. If you got your Bibles, we're going to be in chapter 4 with Daniel. First of all, here, let's go back to this. Let me back up. Go to Matthew chapter 8 real quick. I'm almost going to pass this up, but I ain't going to. Matthew chapter 8. You think you can't find out how great God is? Chapter 8, verse 31, I believe. Uh, see, it says, oh, yeah. it said, they began screaming at them and said, who, you interfere with us, being 29. They began screaming at him and said, you are interfering with us, son of God. Have you come here to torture us before <coughs> God's appointed time? There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance and the demons begged, if you cast us out, send us to the herd of pigs. Do you recognize what happened right there? The demons recognized how great God was. You know, what are you doing messing with us? And if you are, cast us into those pigs over there. And you know what happened? He did it. And you know what happened after that? All the people that were there seen how great Jesus' Father was not that he was a mediocre guy not he like a, a, a all these other idols and statues they've been praying to he's like wow that guy spoke it and the demons followed and they went into the pigs and then the pigs run right off a cliff but they recognized 
The demons recognized. They didn't question his power. They didn't question his authority. They didn't say, if you can. They said, if you're going to cast us out, cast us over there. They recognized the greatness of God. And today we're going to look in chapter 4 of Daniel and we're going to see that a king, Nebuchadnezzar, a self-centered, self-motivated, self-righteous king, considered himself to be a God, recognized the power and the greatness of God. This guy ruled Babylon, the ruthless, most ruthless country in the world, with an iron fist. And he's going to show us today just how great our God is. You know what my prayer is? That we walk out of here today in awe, total awe of a great and powerful and wonderful God. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 4. We're going to start off, I think it's yeah, verse 4. Go back over a little bit of what we read. It says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was living in my palace in the comfort of prosperity, but one night I had a dream that frightened me, and I saw visions that terrified me as I lay in my bed. So I issued an order calling for all the wise men of Babylon so they <coughs> could tell me what my dream meant. And when all the magicians and enchanters and astrologers and fortune tellers came in, I told them the dream, but they could not tell me what it meant. At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. He was named Belshazzar after my God and the spirit of the holy gods in him. And he said to him, Belshazzar, chief of the magician, magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you, that no majesty is too great for you to solve. No mystery is too great for you to solve. Now tell me my dream, what my dream means. And while I was lying in the bed, this is what I dreamed, and I saw a large tree in the middle of the earth, and the tree, grew, the tree grew very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. It had fresh green leaves, and it was loaded with fruit to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade, and the birds nested in its branches. And all the world <coughs> was fed from this tree. Then, as I was lying there dreaming, I saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. And the messenger shouted, Cut down the tree, lop off its branches, shake all of its leaves and scatter its fruit, chase the wild animals from its shade and the birds from its branches, but leave the stump and the roots in the ground, bound with a band of iron and bronze and surrounded by the tender grass. Then let him drench with dew, be drenched with dew from the heavens and let him live with the wild animals among the plants of the field. And seven periods of for seven periods of time, let him have the mind of a wild animal instead of the mind of a human. For this has been decided by the messengers. It is commanded by the holy ones so that everyone may know that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world that he gives to them to anyone who chooses, to them to anyone he chooses, even the lowest of the people. And Belshazzar, that is, that was the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now, tell me what it means. For none of these wise men of the kingdom can, <clears throat> can do so. But you can tell me because the spirit of the holy God is in you. Spirit of the holy God. Mine says God. Yours says God. Not referring that there was many gods. Referring that there was... <coughs> God was the ultimate. Three times we heard him refer referred to Daniel as having the presence of the holy God in him. Now this is a lost man that rules his kingdom. Remember he built this statue to be a God that you would come and you would pray down to him. When you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, you will always get everything you need in every situation. And people who don't even know God will see the greatness of God. Three times this was mentioned in verse 8, verse 9, and verse 18. I want you to think about this for a minute. Daniel's living in Babylon. The worst country in the world. Ruled by one of the most arrogant, self-centered kings ever. This guy built a 90-foot statue of himself and wanted people to bow down to it. But in the midst of all this, Daniel 
showed how great his God was. Remember the first thing he did? Daniel said, look, we can't really eat that meat. We need to stay on our Jewish diet. If you let us stay on our Jewish diet. And the, the Enoch said, man, I can't do that because if you get poor, you get puny and the king's going to kill me. He said, we'll do it for 10 days. Remember? And then in 10 days, what happened? It's not rhetorical. You can answer. Right. They were healthier than the other guys. Yeah, you know that story, huh? <laughs> Bobby said, I know that one. I mean, I know all the others, but I know that one. So God displayed His greatness, right? And the Enoch saw it and knew it, the Bible says. God displayed His greatness in Daniel and the lost knew how great Daniel's God was. God always prepares great things for His people in the midst of terrible times. And we just don't see it. It says, Daniel received from God what he needed. And the eunuch saw how great it was. What about when Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill all the wise men and Daniel stepped in? Didn't God get Daniel a meeting with the king? Absolutely. Didn't God have mercy on Daniel and said, look, I'll give you more time. Remember, the king wanted it now and he wanted it done. He said, no. And Daniel goes to him and said, look, I'll tell you a dream, but you've got to give me some time. Didn't God... Touch his heart where the king said, okay, I'll give you the time. He went back, got his prayer team together. Remember, he got his boys together and they got down on their knees and they prayed and he revealed the dream and he went back and told the king the greatness of God was revealed to Daniel. Every one of his wishes was fulfilled and the greatness of our God was shown to who? An almighty king that was so self-centered he built a 90-foot statue to himself. Folks, we ought to be shouting every day the words, how great is our God. We're awful silent for a people that serve a great and awesome mighty God. You know that? We're awful meek. and we're you know, Well, the meek will inherit the earth. Better read it in context. Doesn't mean the meek can't speak. Okay? Just let me say that. It doesn't mean the meek can't speak. God has nothing in there about telling the world how great He is. Because we'll come to church and we'll sing it, won't we? Boy, we can stand up and throw our heads back and our hands in it. Our God is an awesome God. Reigns from heaven above. We go to the door. What did you do this weekend? Well, I watched TV. I went to a ball game. That's where we should be sitting. Man, I tell you what, I went to church. And my God's so great. You know what he revealed to me? It was such a wonderful time. We don't do that, do we? We wait till next Sunday we get back at church. Our God is an awesome God. How great is your God? How many of y'all believe that we serve a great God? A great and awesome, powerful God. You know what? The world looks outside here and sees all these things and they try to find purpose for them. Right? We have all these different theories of evolution and we come from a bucket of mud or chimpanzees or whatever it was. I tell all those guys, I say, your faith is way stronger than I, mine. It's way harder to believe in a bucket of mud than it is an awesome, great, powerful God. Okay? But I know I serve this God. Why is my lips sealed? Daniel didn't. You talk about anybody had a reason to keep his mouth shut. You know, there's things like fiery furnaces hanging out and all kinds of stuff and every time you turn around, the king has a dream and everybody's going to get killed. Can you imagine living like that? Can you imagine them guys would go to the king's chamber and knock on his door and open the door real quick and listen just to see what kind of mood he was in. But that king knew and experienced, and we know he knew because three times in our passage it says, the Spirit of the Holy God was in Daniel. Three times God tells us. God will always give us whatever we need for every situation. Understand what I just said. God will always give us everything that we need for every situation. Not every way we want. Alright? But we always want the... How many of y'all like the easy? I tell all the guys that, that work in our shop, I said, I'm all about the easy. I want you all to do it the easy way. Work smarter, not harder. You ever heard that? Smarter, not harder. 
I'm all about the easy. <laughs> but we come that way too when it comes to serving God. We're all about the easy. We can do it if it's easy. So that got me to thinking. If you could speak to Daniel and ask him one question. What's the one thing that you wish that you could have had that God would have done for you when you were in Babylon? I bet I know that what that question that would be. Well, I know what that answer would be. God, I would love to go to my homeland, Israel. I would love to go back home. I would love to leave this country. That never happened. Daniel died in Babylon in captivity singing praises to a great God. Shining as a light of a great God. See, God gave him everything he needed to shine where he was. Not everything he wanted to shine where he wanted to be. That kind of cramps our style though, don't it? And God, I'm all into it as long as you do it this way. And I can have this. And I can do it like that. I think I told you all the, the story before that when Terry and I felt the call to the ministry, we started making deals with God how we would do it. If he, if he would let us do this, if he'd let us do that, you know, we'd start a, a horse ministry, we'd start a rodeo ministry, we'd start this ministry, we'd do that. And it's all laid out. Tell me. Many times I laid the plan out to him over and over and over and over again. <coughs> Excuse me. So God says to me, when you're ready to listen, I'm ready to speak. And we ended up in Fort Stockton, Texas. Most of y'all know that. Y'all know where Fort Stockton is? You know that's a calling because you don't go there on purpose. There is absolutely no reason to go to Fort Stockton on purpose. <laughs> like I told you guys, I said, at least you didn't have to go to China. I'm like, mm, I don't know China, Fort Stockton, China. But you know what I found in Fort Stockton, Texas? How great my God was. You cannot believe the stories I could tell you of the things that he provided and the things that he did. Now, it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. Terry's on the website, TFCC website trying to find every church that's in need of a pastor. and We're trying to figure out which one we'd go to. God, we'll go to that one, or we'll go to that one. He goes, no, I got one for you. Matter of fact, it ain't even started yet. How about that? I'm going to send you out in the middle of the desert. And I'm going to provide everything you need for every situation you need, and I'm going to show you personally just how great I am and what I can do with the least because I'm great. What I can accomplish with the willing and the obedient because I am great. The Bible says, in my weakness, he is made strong. I don't accomplish things on my own. Why is that? Because i got this great God that I serve. Why can I have joy and peace and comfort in the midst of adversity? Because i got this great God that I serve. How many of y'all have gotten through a tragedy with the help of a loved one? Someone just draw close to you. Be with you, call you, comfort you. Just imagine how much more God loves you. How much more God will do for you. It's just amazing to me. So I want to say to you. When you recognize the greatness of God. The world sees how great God is. You understand that? When you're willing to acknowledge. And you recognize the greatness of God. The world is willing to see. And able. And gets a grasp of. How great. I don't know if it's for me or not and all. But I'm going to tell you what. That's pretty powerful. Ever had anybody say this to you? Man, I don't know how you got through that. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could overcome that. I don't know if I would be able to handle that. And you could tell them, I couldn't either. But I got this great, awesome God that I serve. And there's nothing too big for God. Huh? You agree with that? Huh? There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing that He can't accomplish. There's nothing that He can't do. As Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego said, if He is willing, our God is able. 
Imagine what them words sounded like to an arrogant, self-centered king. Here's this furnace. And it's blazing. And he's getting ready to throw these guys in it. And he looked at them in the eye and says, O king, live forever. They weren't beating her drum, beating her chest, standing up, throwing bobbles at the king. They said, O king, live forever. But the God that we serve, this great, awesome God that we serve, is able to rescue us from this. But if he's not, he's got a greater and better plan for us. And we're just going to go with them. We're not going to bow down to your statue. Imagine how that hit an arrogant king. It tells us. What did he do? Cranked up the heat, baby. Bible says seven times hotter than it's ever been before. Cranked up the heat. Buddy, you are going to recognize who I am. No, because I got this great God. You know what? You're going to recognize who he is. He's going to reveal himself and show yourself. Through my recognition of God's greatness, people will be exposed to the greatness of God. Do you understand that? How else do you think it's going to happen? There's going to be walking down the street and a Bible's going to slap him upside the head? God is going to use us, and when we recognize and we're willing to stand, and we're willing to say, oh, well, I tell you what, I can't do this, but this God I serve, this great, awesome God that I serve, ain't nothing too powerful, too strong, too overwhelming. There's no hurt that He can't cure. There's a song that someone was just talking about Wednesday night about trying to get Bobby to sing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. She goes through all this stuff that Jesus can do. Let me tell you about how great my Jesus is. And people see it and they recognize. I mean, could Nebuchadnezzar deny the fact that when he threw three guys in there, there was four in there? Could he deny the fact that this flame was raging, that the men that threw him into them guys in the furnace were burned up and consumed, yet they're walking around and he said, hey, didn't we tie their hands? Didn't we throw three of them guys in there? Would you explain to me why there's four of them and they're just walking around as free as a bird? You know what he said there? You know what else he said? One looks like who? One looks like that most high. One looks like that awesome God that they were talking about. Get them boys out of here. They come walking out. The Bible says it wasn't a hair on their head singed. Why? What a mighty God they served. Said their clothes didn't even smell of smoke. Why? What a mighty God they served. Right? They were willing to stand and say how great their God was. They were willing to live it out and just let the world know how great their God was. And when they come walking out, guess what the, word, the world knew? How great God was. You think that didn't spread through the kingdom like wildfire? Huh? Hey, you know them boys that wouldn't bow down and pray? King threw them in a furnace. Yeah, I bet you they burnt real good. No, they didn't burn at all. They say it had something to do with this great, awesome, mighty God they serve. How do you get through that? I got this great, awesome, mighty God I serve. How can you smile at that? I got this great, awesome, mighty God that I serve. How can you be so happy? I got this great, awesome, mighty I mean, how can you not be happy? Can you see the enthusiasm in me? If you can't, open your eyes. Man, there's no way that you cannot get fired up when you think about the greatness and the awesomeness of God. Walk out this building and look outside at what He created. Don't look in here because you'll be disappointed. But there's some awesome great things out there. How many of y'all have been to the Grand Canyon? Oh my goodness. What a great awesome God we serve. How many of y'all ever been to the Rocky Mountains? What a great, awesome God we serve. How about the ocean? You ever been out on the ocean? Ever watched the sunset from the beach? What a great, awesome God we serve. And the creator of all that is the one that lives in here that is willing to get you through every situation, even in Babylon. Because folks, we're living in Babylon right now. Believe it or don't believe it, the society in which we live in mirrors Babylon so much it's unreal. The things that we do here today in this country that 50 years ago people said would never happen here. 
I remember we moved to West Texas. They were talking about gay marriage. And our old rancher friend there, he said, that'll never happen in Texas. Texans won't allow that to happen. So when it happened, I said, Eulis, you know what they just allowed in Texas? I said, gay marriage. Well, this state's just, won't repeat exactly what he said, but <laughs> he wasn't a believer yet. <laughs> He, he quoted scripture out of a different Bible. <laughs> Praise the Lord, he got to come to Christ before he died. And, but if, if Terry and I were sent to West Texas for no other reason than to preach the gospel to that old man, I'm glad we went. But folks, when you walk out of here today, just think about the allness, the awesomeness, the great God that you serve. What can weigh you down? What can bother you? What can harm you? What can rob your joy? What can take you down when you think about what an awesome, great, mighty God we serve? There is none other that can do what He can do. People have tried and put their trust in so many things and everything has let them down. They've tried money. They've tried sex. They've tried jobs. They've tried popularity. They've tried everything. Everything fails except for one thing. You know why? Because it's not very great and it surely ain't awesome. But I know of a great awesome God that will never let you down. The Bible says that He sticks closer than a brother. And I'm going to tell you how much I know. And if you don't think that this is the sign of an awesome, great God. I want you to look at that cross behind me. Because that great, awesome God was willing to take His Son and nail Him to that cross so that you and I could be redeemed, reconciled, adopted back into the family. You don't think He's great and awesome? He was willing to give the most precious thing He had so that you and I could be able to be spend eternity back with Him in heaven. When the new earth and the new heaven is formed and God comes, the Bible says comes to live amongst His people. We will be there because of a great awesome God, the Bible says, didn't hold anything back from the creation in which He loved. And if you can't find greatness and awesome in that, you need to check your pulse. That's the God that I serve. And I rejoice in Him every day. Father, we love You. We thank You and praise You because You are a great, awesome God. You're not just one of the gods. You're not just a God. You are the only God. There is no other. Your awesomeness was displayed on the cross of Calvary. That You poured out Your Son's blood for a wretch like me. My little brain can't really wrap my hands around that. That you cared enough, that you loved enough, that your love was so awesome, that your mercy was so great. I can never thank you enough. And I just ask that, Lord, you forgive me of all the things that I've done against you. Father, let me keep this fire, this zeal in my life and understand each and every day when my feet hit the floor what an awesome, mighty God you are. You're the God of the valley and the God of the mountaintop. The same God that was yesterday will be the same God today and you'll be the same God tomorrow. You are never changing. That your love and your mercies are renewed every morning. And I thank you. So Father, for everyone that has a relationship with you, I pray they walk out of here just skipping and singing my God what an awesome God that he reigns from heaven above how great is my God more than anything Lord I pray for those ones that are here the ones that can hear my voice that don't have a relationship with you that heard today about a God that was so great and so awesome and loved them so much that he was willing to give his only son for them maybe they're put their hope and trust in so many things they've tried to find Amazement and grace, greatness in, in work or relationships or popularity, money, I don't know. But maybe today's the day that they're realizing for the first time that there is only one great God. Maybe they're thinking that they've done too much, that they've drifted too far. Lord, speak to them today and let them know that the only thing that keeps them from you is them. For you have paid the way for their adoption, for their reconciliation. 
So, Lord, if today is the day of their salvation, if today is the day that they would like to be adopted back in the family, if today is the day that they would like to turn their life over to you and your greatness, it is so simple. If they believe. See, Nebuchadnezzar knew. He had seen. But he never believed. Today I pray you open their eyes and they have seen. And you have softened their heart and they believe. Your word says if they believe in their heart. That Jesus is who he says he was. If they're willing to confess with their mouth. If they're willing to say Jesus is you. That he died and rose again. They'll be adopted back into the family. It's as simple as this little prayer. They can follow along with me right now and say, God, I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus was you in the flesh. That he walked this earth for 33 years to be my guide. I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that he went to the cross to pay my debt for the things that I've done against you. And Father, now I ask you to forgive me for those things. I believe in my heart of hearts that he died on that cross and was placed in a borrowed tomb and three days later he arose. That he defeated death. That he now sits at your right hand. He did that not for himself but for me that I too may be able to join you in heaven. So Father, I ask you to come and live in me and through me. I turn the reins of my life over to you. And I do it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. If you said that prayer, please fill out a green sheet. We have little barns back there where we take up our offering. But you can fill one out and drop it in there. I promise we will not come and hound you. We will not knock on your door. If you're online, let me encourage you to find a Bible-believing church, to find a brother or sister in Christ. If you cannot find or do not know of anybody, go to our website. My personal phone number is there. Please call me. I would love to celebrate with you and help you get started on your walk. Folks, you have a great Sunday afternoon. God bless. Adios.